Hi, Scissorin here with another Path of Exile University video. Uh, today, well, for now, we are going to be covering axes. Uh, so I've got a couple of uh, one-handed axes here and two-handed axes. The crafting process is going to be pretty much the same. The main difference is if you're dual wielding, well, you have to make two axes. So it's twice as hard, uh, which is a big downside with dual wielding and a huge benefit to being two-handers because... It's, it's, you save so much currency. And uh, <clears throat> in the upcoming Harvest League, they're doing loads, loads of changes to two handers. It looks like it's going to be really strong. So I think the majority of, especially new players, that's that's what I would recommend. Um, so um, for, for crafting, well, we'll start super basic. So whenever you are, um, whenever you are using weapons, for, uh, actually, let me go grab something real quick. Whenever you're using weapons in the leveling acts, what you do is just the Rustic Sash recipe. Uh, especially early on, until like uh, level 30, that is completely fine. So you would buy a Rustic Sash, and then it needs to be either blue or rare. I'll show both. Blue, rare, whetstones. Um... So if you see here, you see the two differences, right? So the uh, the rare sash makes a weapon go all the way up to 64% um, physical damage. And then a uh, a blue one is the tier below, which goes all the way up to 49%. And that's that's completely fine for early. Now, obviously, you can, like, you can get lucky and just identify an axe. <clears throat> but um, I'd say especially up to, like, level 40, 45... Just having like a single percentage fist roll is good, right? That's completely fine. Now, once you get somewhere between Act 5 and 7, now this depends a little bit on how much you invest into damage, how much you have to invest into hardcore, like if you're, um, uh, if you are, um, needing to put more into survival, you might end up lacking damage and then you might have to compensate with a slightly better weapon. Uh, ideally, you do want to like move towards like the faster attack speed basis because if you have flat added fist on your rings, amulet, and stuff like that, that generally ends up better. And faster attacking weapons most of the time feel better in Path of Exile. Now, obviously, a lot of that is changing with Harvest too. They are trying to address and make slower weapons feel good. So we'll see what changes and stuff with that. But uh, yeah, and and the the main premise of how to build a weapon is you want percentage physical damage, flat physical damage, and attack speed, right? That's the three things you want. And uh, I'll get a little bit more advanced with that later and also show like a website that shows different roles and things like that. Um, now, obviously, it's uh, very, very easy to see in like just the tooltip. So here you see that it has 46 to 84 physical damage. And early on, sometimes you'll see that just having flat added will be more than the percentage damage, right? So... Just go with whatever is the highest. Early on, your tooltip's probably pretty easy to follow. Um, and yeah, like I said, when you are getting to like anywhere from Act 5 to 7, you start wanting to want like more of a upgrade on your weapons. And and somebody just asked how to enable advanced tooltips for weapons. I'll show that real quick before we begin, begin crafting. So it's in your options and advanced mod descriptions here. Uh, that means that when you hold down Alt, it'll show you like ranges and more information. So that's pretty important. Now, quite a lot while while leveling, you'll find essences, uh, and these are very very good. So, for an example, if I am I find a weeping or wailing essence while leveling, and um, say I'm like around Kitava, right? You're around Kitava and you want an upgrade. Uh, I'll, I'll show like two outcomes here on a Tomahawk and a um, War Axe. Now, Tomahawk, I would say, is the best one just because of the high attack speed, like I mentioned. And then we'll talk a little bit about the crafting outcome. So, um, both of these are pretty great, and let's talk a little bit about why. Um, so if we got this one while leveling in an actual race, we'd be like, wow, dude, this is great. Because as soon as you get, um, it's past like the, um, the sewer in Act 3, you get, uh, um, there's a there's a crafting recipe there. 
and it gives you flat physical damage and percentage physical damage. And um, and this acts, which might be a, bit, a little bit hard to tell, but it can actually craft more physical damage. Now, some people are going to be wondering, but it already has physical damage. Why can you craft more? So this is a hybrid roll. And uh, the highest possible high roll, hybrid roll uh, goes, I think it's up to 83. We well, actually, I have a website here called PWDB. Uh, I'll link to that as well. But uh, we'll I'll look at the three different like roll types you can get and go over them a little bit. So this is the hybrid roll. So it goes, um, I think the one we had was either journeyman's or reavers. Hold on. Squires. It's actually the bottom one. So we have the bottom one. And then uh, if you have an item level 83x, this goes all the way up to 75 to 79. So item level on items is what decides what can you, what's the best rolls that you can get on this axe. So if I have 82, you just can't get dictator, right? That just doesn't exist on an item level 82. And the way you see that, you just hold down. So this one's an item level 45. And that means that um, the highest we could get is mercenary because 46 is champions. Um, and then we have the, the pure roll. The pure roll goes all the way up to 179. And then you have the flat roll. So it's very important to have both percentage physical damage and flat damage as well. And then we have uh, the flaring is the highest here at 77. Will there be a test on this? Let's see. So I'll move this off for now. But uh, it's just really important to know that even though you have a percentage physical roll, as long as it's hybrid, you can still craft the pure roll. Now, you do still need an open prefix. So items in Path of Exile have six affixes. Prefixes are the ones that come before the name if it's blue. Um, so it will go like heavy siege axe of something, right? Uh, and then suffixes are what comes after the name. Um, and this one's great because this is how it would look for leveling. And this this would carry us through to like X7, 8. We could actually probably go straight to maps with this. That's how strong that is. Um... Like, it would probably start going a little bit low on damage around Act 9 or 10. But, um, the, like, having both is so strong while leveling. And you can tell that the game isn't, like, designed for new players to to have that powerful weapon. So you don't really need that much power. Um, this is a good one as well. Because it, it has the open prefix, right? It's got attack speed. We have the flat physical that we guaranteed with the, uh, with the contempt. And then it has an open for flat fizz. And this is something that like, I would 100% craft like the higher craft too for 8C. Uh, sorry, 8 ults. You ideally want to avoid using any chaos orbs for, for most of the early stuff. Uh, a scenic thing for the 27 months. Um, so that's like, that's like covering early game. But uh, most of the time, just getting a percentage fist roll or a flat fist roll is going to be enough for leveling at least until like Act 6 or 7. And then you might want to think about, you know, crafting one. Now, because of this, getting alterations, sorry, getting regals while leveling can be really, really strong. Um, there's a couple of things you can do if you're... Ma it, like, and regals while leveling is very rare. I'd say they were pretty common in Delirium just because it was po pooping out so much currency, right? There was just like a diarrhea of currency uh, when you got the currency ones. And that's great for crafting like this. Uh, so there's a couple of things. You could do like the, the Rustic Sash recipe and just regal that. That will get you like 64%. Plus you can craft the flat physical. That's great. Um, you could also just try to um, uh, alt craft it. Now I normally always save my ults during leveling. I don't think I've ever... Well maybe once in Act 7 or something. But very 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 rarely I would alt craft that early. I always try to save up to have at least 20 to 40 alterations. For when I first get my sea janks. Um, so here I have an item level 62 Sea Jacks that I went and picked up in Blood Aqueduct. Um, and if we look at the website, that means that we can't get Tempered. Because Tempered is item level 65. So it's, it's not bad to progress a little bit and get, um... Like, you would actually need a Desecrated Chamber Sea Jacks. It's not bad going there before crafting. But I usually do start crafting if I'm a melee character. Somewhere around Blood Aqueduct when I find a Siege Ice here. Um, so the highest percentage roll we can get is Cruel, which is item level 60. 
Um, if I have essences, I would definitely, th I would try throwing some essences on a CJ I say contempt, right? So if I, let's say, say I have like maybe two, two whalings by then, right? Then I would probably try something like this. And always remember when you're starting to actually craft, not so important in the early game, but once you're at like Siege Axis and X6 onwards, if you have enough whetstones, you use them while they're white. Well, I had a prophecy there, but you know, I would use four. Um, so like that one, I, I wouldn't keep. That's not good enough. It's only got the fist damage roll. And, and now we're at the stage where we kind of do want something a little bit more. And, and that one as well. It's it's not great. We don't care about the elemental damage. So let's show a little bit of alteration crafting. Now, this is something you might have to like pick up and vendor quite a lot of alterations. Um, because this is just sheer luck, right? Sometimes you'll get it in five or ten alterations. And it's a little bit about knowing when to stop and what you should be settling for. Um, one, two. So heavy is not enough. That's not what we want to keep. So, annealed, that's probably enough, actually. That is probably enough, because that's tier 4. So then I could regal that, and then... Let's see, what would be the, the current physical damage? So then, like, this, this would be... Let's see, let's just craft that. And now... We have a... Here. 114 to 203 damage so for dps and how much that is we add the 114 plus 203 divided by 2 multiplied by 1.5 i'll show you an easier way to do this in a second so this is 230 pdps that's completely fine for maps you do want to get up to 300 pretty fast but this is like completely acceptable for maps uh, and part of what you want to save your chaos for early Baylor, thanks so much for the host uh, i'm going to open up path of building as well it's a really really useful program for a lot of reasons because not everybody uses like a trade macro or something that can like very easily calculate the damage. So seeing as most people have path of building, um, you can um, you can calculate it very quickly like this. You hold hover your cursor over the item in game, hold Control C, then go to path of building, click on items, and then just Control V. So here it'll say 237 DPS. Now this will automatically calculate it with the 20 quality as well. And this is like completely fine for early maps, right? So now I probably wouldn't bother. Well, I mean, I would get a second one if I'm dual wielding, but if I'm two-handed, um, this is completely fine for maps. So let's let's make an example of like an early Valak. This is a item level 72 Valak. That means that it sadly cannot get tyrannical because that's item level 73. Um, so what I will try to do very early when I'm playing a build like this is I will try to push very hard for getting to item level 73. So that is tier 5 maps. You can also get it from chests. So a tier 1 map is 68. So you do need to push for tier 5 maps or like tier 3 and 4s. And then getting getting items out of chests that have plus level of items on it. Madcap, thank you for the 30 months. Um, and Baylor, thank you for the 43 months. Yeah, it's the min, min damage plus max damage. Divide by 2, multiply by the attack speed. But it's it's a lot easier to just um, do it in Path of Building. So yeah, Tyrannical is like the the super important early mod in my opinion to push for. On 73, you're getting like quite a lot of things. You will already have tempered by then. Sadly, you don't get flaring. And this is like tier 10 maps. So it is worth pushing for flaring. But obviously that's not something most people are going to get to on day 1. And it does get, you know, quite a lot more rippy by then. Um, so in 73, you get both Tyrannical and Emperors as the ones you can hit. Um, and that's why that is quite worth hitting. So the highest we can get on this is still Cruel. And um, especially pick up a lot of Augmentations because for pretty much any affix or any suffix, I will Augment, right? So here we got Strength, which isn't something we really care about. But just for one more augment, I can have an additional try at getting like tyrannical um, and stuff like that. Um, so we'll, we'll craft a little bit more. Now obviously, very early on, this isn't something you're going to be able to use. So here we have a Neeld. I think that's the highest flat we can get. That's the same as that one? Yeah. And then, boop. Didn't really get anything here. 
Now, let's look at, like, so this is going to be the same equivalent for 200. So I'm going to craft this just so I can give an example of DPS that would be fine to, like, start mapping with. Um, oh, actually, we're going to show that POB thing. So we'll just copy-paste it into POB. <clears throat> and there's, like, nothing special I'm using for this. This is just part of the game. Can you remove chat on screen? We can't see your craft. Oh, is that what I'm crafting in here? Oh, okay. What if I move it up? That's fine, right? That work? So this is a two-hander, and it has 370 PDPS. Right? So that's like sort of like the... Um, so for a one hundred, it would be like two thirty, and for a two hundred, it's like uh, four four seventy or what was it four seventy or four thirty? Three seventy, sorry, <clears throat> three seventy. Uh, and that is like completely fine for starting mapping. So you don't need that much, and you should find, depending on how unlucky you get, I find anything from like three to like twelve chaos while leveling. So you should have at least enough for one. And then I'm gonna try to avoid. Um, Answering questions that I've already answered previously at the start. So if you missed the start, I'd recommend like watching the video because I'll just ignore questions that I've already answered or chat can help answer them. That'd be great. Um, so I'm going to scour this as well and um, and try showing like some like more intermediate examples. Now, something like this reverse, I probably I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be regaling that I wouldn't regal off hybrid. That's something you do if you have like emperors or dictators because that's like the higher roles. Um, and annealed as well, it's not terrible to like regal, and we did see, but it, it's very, it's easier to regal from percentage fists than it is to regal from annealed. Because the, uh, the percentage crafts you have, they aren't really that high, whereas the flat crafts you have are. So, um, instead, like, yeah, annealed isn't bad, but I definitely prefer, like, if I can get... Uh, I, I, what I would like to give here as an example is I would like to find, um, Cruel would probably be the best example. Either Cruel or Bloodthirsty would be great examples, uh, of why it's so much better to get the percentage fit. So we're going to try to get that and, like, skip over the, the flat rolls right now. And that should be pretty easy to roll. Um, it definitely, like, playing of a, a, a build like Melee, like, that encourages you to craft a lot. <clears throat> I'll stop at this example. Um... Does encourage you to pick up quite a lot of rares. I focus very heavily on picking up like rings and amulets and belts just so I can uh, make sure that I have enough alls to craft because there there is a lot of crafting. Now here we have attack speed with f physical damage. It's not very like if this was annealed like tier five or tier four, I would hundred percent regal it. Probably worth regaling still just because of the high attack speed. So we didn't get anything here, uh, and then I'll I'll do another craft as well, just to like show an example of how much. Um, we'll do the same craft as with Anil. Let's see what this is now with attack speed. Um, it should be quite an improvement. So our last one was three hundred and seventy. This is four hundred and two. So even though it has a lower flat roll, the attack speed carries it that much, right? Uh, and if this had annealed, it would be like four forty or something. So attack speed like is a very very big impact. I'm just like I'm not 100% sure what are the most helpful things for new players, but I I've had a lot of people like ask me to explain a little bit more what are good roles and what to look for. So I'm trying to like cover that a bit more. We're going to we're going to try again to roll for cruel. I wish I had more augments. Side, do you have augments under the arm hardcore I could steal for some exalted orb? There's another annealed. We're just going to skip that. I can check. Sweet. Thank you. Razor sharp. Razor sharp and attack speed. I, I would probably regal that. But right now we're looking for cruel. Um, If I got a high like conquers hybrid. Uh, which is like 40% hybrid I think. And like 20% attack speed. Then I would. I would have a hard time not regaling that. Yeah. Control C. Copy paste. Another Razor Sharp. 
Low hybrid, low attack speed. So this is this is wicked. It's it's I would want at least tier five percentage fist. Again, this is let's let's uh, just do it for a comparison. Um just so we can like give more examples. So yeah, because we were using the four fist craft. So let's look at the four fist craft here. I have like 300. Perfect. Thank you. Just throw an exalt. I'm not going to need exalt for the crafting here. If you use path of building, you don't want to reel randomly. You can just edit and add the craft to see if it's better at all. Yes, that is an excellent point. I'll give an example of that in a sec too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, There. So this would be 330. So you definitely need one tire. Uh, but but yeah, like you said, you can just like edit here and look up the values and then go, for example, well, what would it be if it was 100% fizz? Uh, and then it would be 390. At the moment, we're studying axes. So we'll continue. We'll look for like cruel or something. And again, like, this is the huge benefit to two-handers. With the... Uh, yeah, that, that's fine as an example. So, Cruel goes up to, like, 140 or something. Don't forget the Granite Flask plus Augment or Vendor to upgrade the Flat Fist roll. It goes up to Tier 2 Flat Fist. Yeah, but generally, especially SSF, you're not going to have multiple... Um, you're not going to have a shit on a Granite Flask on SSF, right? Uh, and on Traily... I, I'm not a big fan of like using those. I generally don't use those a lot. So this is fine. I would want Cruel still. Definitely would want to regal this. And this is a huge win, right? Like if you get this, this is great. Because now we have like, this is um probably at least push up to like 77. At least 73. So you craft the Flat Fizz. And then boom. 430 pdps which is great this is like enough for like the early conquerors and stuff like that uh, and you don't even want to think about using exalts at all this early but uh that is like completely fine for early conquerors and anything like that now i think somebody already and uh kuma thank you for the four months casa thank you for the six months i think somebody already said that they reverse engineered the vol axe posted uh and the two handers are getting a baseline buff so I think if this was Harvest, I think this would be 500 or 510 PDPS. What is it with 28 quality? Well, you wouldn't do 28 quality on this, but we'll talk about that later when, when doing higher weapons. But uh, yeah, uh, Valaxes are getting like a big base line buff. We saw this from um, removing the physical on the Ulna Tool Axe. They teased. They teased. So they teased and then accidentally the uh, Valaxes are specifically getting buffed. Now, um... <clears throat> now, some people are probably wondering why we're using these bases. So let's let's look over. Let's see. PoE axis. Let's open the Wikipedia article for bases. So if we see, if we scroll to the bottom, we see that siege axis. They're not even like the best space. They're not. They're not even at the bottom, right? Ruining hatchet is the best space. So why are we using siege axis? Well, it's because if you see all the other ones, they don't have the same attack speed. If you see, I think it's this. Yeah, this one is the DPS. And you see here it's 83, 88, 92. The Royal Axe is 92 PDPS. Uh, and PD, uh, Siege Axes only have 81. But they're still considered the best axe. And the one that's like... You're never going to see like any weapon crafter try to get Royal Axes. And that's because of the attack speed. Uh, that's the most important thing. So that's why you'll notice like racers and a lot of people will generally like try to like focus more on going like tomahawk, boarding axe, uh, and siege axe if you can. Now, that doesn't mean that runic axes, axes infernal royal and vile axes and but like that doesn't mean that these are bad, right? They're still completely usable. You should still pick these up and identify them when they're rare because you could very easily get like a way way better one. Uh, and there are changes coming to the league now that are making slower weapons better. So we don't fully know exactly what they're doing. They're just like starting to tell us. Like so far we have like the, I think it's called Fist of War, which is like very aimed for like slow attacks where it's like every three seconds or two seconds or whatever you get an extra power slam. So then 
obviously being slower is better. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And then let's look at Val Axis as well. Here we see that Val Axis, while they're widely considered the best base type, um, there's nothing wrong with crafting on a Void Axe, a Despot Axe, or a Flesh Ripper, right? I wouldn't go lower, I wouldn't go Azamite Axe. Um, and like, I've sadly seen some people, this like, this hurts me inside because people ask me for advice with crafting. And this one looks the same as a Val Axe, but they are not the same. Um, I have had people message me like an item level 83 Labrys with like tyrannical and flaring on it. And I'm like, oh, that, wait, what? Why is it on a Labrys? What have you done? And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, it's a Labrys. It's the nightmare base. So we have like, these are like, I call it normal nightmare in hell after Diablo, right? It's, these are like the, the, uh, the early bases. And then you have like the later ones. And this is like the merciless base or whatever. So, um, obviously a Valax has 126 DPS, whereas the Labrys only has 100. So, like, the base type, and this is super important, especially for endgame crafting, you definitely want at least one of these. That's very important. Now, all of these, all of these, from, like, Sundering Axe and above, all of these can be good axes if you identify them well rare. But, uh, yeah, generally these are the ones that you, you want to go for. Um, now, sometimes I've actually encountered, this was before I was streaming and I, um, I did a lot of axe crafting back in Tempest and, uh, I think I made like 80 to 90 X and I started crafting a lot and like people like eat up started buying my axes a lot because I generally had the best ones and that was all I did that league, just crafted axes and I loved it. But then I started running out of high item level bases because they used to be a lot harder in Path of Exile than Hardcore because like there was very very rare that you would actually get item level 83 so i was like well you know void axes are pretty cheap and they're pretty much just as good and i remember i made a 600 dps axe void axe and i was having a really hard time selling it and one guy said like oh i'll, I'll buy it for this amount because it's not a val axe and i was like right but a 600 dps void axe is still better than a 595 pdps val axe He's like, no, eat up said Valaxes are the best. I only want Valaxes. And I'm like, fucking streamers, dude. Well, like, 600 is better than 595. Fuck right off. The fuck? This is so fucking stupid. Stupid fucking streamers. Um, and then obviously, like, the only one that does have an implicit advantage here is the Flesh Ripper, which is better. Uh, the problem is that a lot of people don't go crit and they don't go base crit. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. So, Slayer is used quite a lot. And Slayer, it doesn't matter if you're using a Flesh Ripper or a Valax for the crit part. And then Valax becomes the best because they ask the highest DPS. Um, so, if you see here, on Slayer, you have um, this one, which is the base crit is 7.5. So, um, it doesn't matter what the crit on your, on your weapon is. But... Um, there's a lot of advantages to crafting on a Flesh Ripper because if you're like a Berserker or Gladiator and you do want to go crit for some reason, the Flesh Ripper helps so much. Uh, but most people, you're probably not going to go crit. And then if you're, especially if you are non-crit, then the Malax is the best. I just wanted to like talk a little bit about base types to make sure that, you know, you know a 600 DPS Despot Axe is going to be better than a 599 DPS Malax. Um... And uh, as you can see here, like, and somebody just asked about uh, attack speeds and stuff. So generally, uh, there's very little attack speed differences here. Here it's like 10. Uh, whereas on the, the, the Siege Axis, a lot of them have like, it's, it's a bigger difference. And dual wielding as well, gets a, you have a baseline bonus from dual wielding. And most of the dual wielding builds are all about attack speed. Most of the 200 builds aren't. They're usually geared, especially now in the coming patch, they're more geared towards slower attacks and slower being better. Um, and this is especially going to be true in Harvest. So there there are a bit of differences there in like archetypes and playstyles. Um, and, and, and like, for example, there are benefits to both Despot X and Void X having the higher attack speed that the, the flat roll will be more important than the percentage physical roll. But uh, that, that's like the main covers in, in base types and talking a little bit about that.
and and then let's see a little bit more so here we have one that's at least item level 77 right so here now we have the chance to get tyrannical and um tyrannical can be you know what i'm actually not going to even craft on the 79 to show tyrannical because tyrannical i think is one in 1200 uh on average or something like that i can't remember the exact numbers and then i think merciless is one in 3000 so merciless is the uh up to 179 percent so I'm just going to craft now as an example of what I'd be looking for. I wasn't expecting it to take two alterations, but this is a great example. I'm happy that happened. Thanks, Chris. Um, so this is a great example of something I would keep. So I would augment this. Now, before we wouldn't augment because we would be looking to multi-mod when multi-mod had, uh, you know, you could craft the entire item. And then we would start like thinking about annulling and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I would just... Um, okay, so this is actually a very, very great outcome. What would happen here is now we would be beelining straight for the multi-mod recipe. Uh, and if you don't know, this is also going to be easier in Harvest because they've teased that they can, we can change a Pale Court Fragment for another Pale Court Fragment. So the Pale Court is like the Inyas, Ebers, Volker, and whatever the fuck the last one's called. And in Harvest, we'll be able to put one of these in and uh you get another random one back right so um you need a full set of this and that opens up the pale court now i can't i don't have a full set so i can't show you right now but it isn't too hard the the most dangerous thing in the pale court and it is a boss fight the most and you like there's no like there's no staging area basically you go in and you're in the boss fight um and uh, from, from each, like, uh, prophecy side quest that you get these from, so it's like the Unbearable Whispers, Unbreathing Queen, um, and there's two other ones I can't remember, but it's it's like the, the four different prophecy chains. At the end of all of them, when you do the fifth one, and generally you do get the fourth and fifth ones pretty easily from League drops. So they do actually drop. You don't actually have to bother doing the entire chain. Um, but... Uh, you get a, uh, like, for example, uh, what are they called? Canna, you get these. Suffixes cannot be changed. Prefixes cannot be changed. Cannot roll attack mods and cannot roll caster mods. It's the ones you get from doing the chain. And then once you do the pale council, you get the multi-mod recipe. Can have up to three crafted modifiers. So, as an example here, I'm actually just, um... We, we're, I'll, I'll show in Path of Building. This is uh, Somebody mentioned this earlier as a good example I should give, and they, I think they made a very good point. So I've copy-pasted this now. And then we'll put it in Path of Building, right? So here, nothing special right now, just 186. But we know that we can, with Multimod, at the cost of one suffix, we can add two prefaces here, right? So, we would... This is something we would 100% use the 1x to do 100 to 129. I can't remember exactly where you get this. I think this is from a map. If I remember. It might be... It's not cells. It starts on C, doesn't it? Relic chambers? Oh. Isn't that a spell one? You might be right. But it'll say. It'll say like below. It'll show where it's like undiscovered from. So you can see where the craft is. But it is 1x for this. And... As an SSF thing, this is what you want to save your results for. Because this is like an important craft. So you would craft multi-mod first. Uh, which you don't need to simulate in Path of Building. It'll work no matter what in POB. You just when you're actually crafting it. You want to craft multi-mod. Then the Fizz roll. And then you want to craft the uh, 4 Chaos physical roll. I believe is the highest. Where is that? 17 to 30. And now we have a 430 PDPS Act. Now, um... There's another, let's see, what's the website called? Is it PoE Craft? There's another website you can use. Um, so, we'll, we'll look at that in a second. But, um, let's see. So, the max roll that we could possibly get, the max divine one. Yeah, I think, mm, yeah, Craft of Excel too, but it was PoE Craft I was looking for for this example. Um, but, uh, PoB works for this too. So, like, if you uh, do like I just did now, the max divinable one, which is not including the uh, emperors actually. 
Okay, no, I'll I'll use PoE Craft as an example. Wait. Okay, never mind. I can't actually, I can't actually use that. Well, I was gonna use an example of uh, yeah, this has quality. I was gonna use an example of what like the actual max quality would be. PoE Craft was sold. Ah, okay. But anyway, so like I think this can go to like 460 or 465. Uh, with 20% quality, and I'll talk about uh, getting higher quality in a second. So this is a great axe. This is completely endgame. You can do Awakener with this, 100%. Shout out to Vexal. Can I do what I want to do there, though? Maybe I can. I want to see, like, the actual max roll. Siege axe. I haven't actually done this in this website. I usually do this for, like, probability. There's Emperors. And then... This so cannot be rolled. What am I... Do I need to like... You need to right click. Okay, I haven't done this. On this website before, but the other example was sold. Really? Only available from Exalted Arms. Okay, you know what? It, it too annoying, too annoying. And the website I want to do is an example doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, this is like pretty much a max roll example. The only one that's not completely maxed is the Emperor roll, uh, and that goes up to seventy four. So what we can do is we can just add there. So the absolute max roll that the axe we made can get 463. That's a bit loud music. There. 463. That's like the best divine. So what do you want to stop at when divining that? Well, I would probably stop at like 440 and above, right? It depends a little bit on how many divine orbs you have. Um, and then let's talk about how to get more quality on your weapon. Now, if you have perfect fossils, you can do that before crafting the item, right? Seeing as we already have rolls and we have crafted this, we can't use perfect fossils anymore. But, um, but if we, uh, let's, I don't have any other, like, perfect ones. But, um, we can, we, well, I'll, I'll roll over that anyway because we're, we're about to, like, continue giving other examples. So, this is the axe that, like, you know, you obviously wouldn't roll over this. But, uh, like, let's say we were, like, let's say this was white, right? And we were going to continue, um... Dude, no, don't do it. Why? We're giving examples and teaching people. We're not actually using this. Um, anyway. So, yeah, imagine that this was, like, a white base. Then, um, we would be, um, using a perfect fossil on it. And that can go up to 30, right? That can go up to 30. Now, there are a couple other ways to force this. If you already have a crafted one, right? Like the one we had, you can get um, Hillock on Transport. Hillock on Transport is going to give you, uh, if he's level 3, he doesn't need to be the leader. He just needs to be level 3 and in transportation on the Betrayal system. And I have a big video explaining that and everything about it. Um, and that will uh, make a... It won't change your rolls. It will just upgrade it straight to 28. Chat, it's not good. What the fuck? Yeah, 75%. No, that was the that was the, the one with the Emperor. So this goes up to 460. So that was a really, really good weapon that we just rolled over. But it was just examples. Now, uh, there's another thing. If you're finished crafting the weapon, right? And you're never going to touch this again. Um, you can corrupt it. And uh, you do that with your bestiary. These are pretty common. It's the, um, it's the, the like, Fairgraves tentacle miscreation things. And they give you the corrupt 30%. So, um, they do this. So, for example, whoop, that's a quick example. And then you just fight those and it will corrupt it. Now, this doesn't have a chance to break your item. It cannot destroy it. It's going to make it 30% quality. And that's it, right? That is all it does. Now, someone might be like, well, what if I want to change colors later? Well, you still can, right? So say I really, really want, um, like, red, red, blue later, you can still do that, and you can still link it 
too later. A lot of people forget that when an item is corrupted, it now just costs Vol Orbs in your crafting bench. Yeah, higher quality increases the damage. And this works with everything. If an, like if you find a sixth thing um, that has bad colors for you, you can still chrome it. It just costs Vol Orbs. And a lot of people don't know this. That's why I like bringing it up a lot. Um, so so for this, we would we would do 30 quality. And with 30 quality, this would be like 477 as max. So this is awesome. This is I haven't played Softcore Trade League, so I'm not sure what that would sell for on Softcore Trade League. And I'm sure that's what the majority of people watching are, are playing on and stuff. But uh, that's a really, really great axe. This is on Hardcore, probably like 10 to 15 x Not sure on Softcore. So that is 30. How is 40 possible? So the highest you can get is 48 quality. Um, and how do you get that? So to get 48 quality, first you need like 30 as a base quality, and then um, you would need different rolls. Like we couldn't do that on the uh, the Emperor's hybrid roll there, but you have rolls here that have um, 13 to 18 quality and attack speed, for example. So uh, another example of that would be if you have a hybrid and a fist roll, maybe. Like say you have um, um, yeah. So say okay, you know what? I'm gonna give Craft of Exile another try. This the other website I need for this is dead. Well Bax. Oh, base item. Box. Ah, no, I clicked the wrong one. I hate everything. I hate me. There, exalted orbs. This should work, I think. Um, okay, so let's say that you have um like this is another multimod example. Let's say that you have um cruel. And you have, um, no, actually, not cruel, sorry, hybrid. We need hybrid for this example. I haven't used this enough. Okay, so let's say we have the same role again, right? Emperors. But we, instead of attack speed. Oh, actually, no, that does work. Instead of attack speed, we have cruel. So then that would put the axe. And this happens. This so sometimes you'll identify it, sometimes you won't. Uh, so this would be the axe would be um, two hundred and twenty-eight percent, right? And now you could just craft flat physical on this, and that would be an awesome axe already. However, what you could do is you could multi mod. See, you could multi mod, and you could do, for example, attack speed and quality, which I'm struggling to find. Oh, because it's on the right. Here, you can do attack speed and quality. I hate everything. I hate this website. It's very clunky for doing what I want. Okay, back to path of building. Much easier to do in path of building. With no prep. Um, okay. Add modifier. Prefix. So much easier for me. Anyway, so it has cruel. So much faster. I feel silly. It has cruel and it has emperors, right? So we have those two rolls, and remember that they stack. No, I don't know. That's the problem, and I want to teach people, <laughs> right? And that—that's like, you know, maybe maybe you identify this. Maybe maybe you threw an alchemy on something or an essence on something, and you got cruel and emperors together. Now, obviously, this—it's quite rare. Yeah, I know that's not what the website's for. That's why I wanted Craft of Exile, because Craft of Exile was like the best website for this until they sold out. Um, and yeah, the Temple Entons are pretty good too. They're very similar to Tyrannical. Um, and then, so these are the ones that, let's say like, say we only have two stats, right? Maybe you've alt crafted this, you've alt, alt regaled this. Um, and then you would, uh, you would multi-mod the, uh, the flat physical, because you need physical on it. Or the axe isn't going to be good. And then you would do the uh, the attack speed and quality. Which I now need to find. Here. And now... Um, let's see. Let's just like... Let's max all the rolls just to see what the max possible outcome would be as well. 
if everything was perfectly divine. And this isn't something I would do to like simulate how strong something is, right? If you're checking how strong a character is, this is something you do to get an idea of when should you stop when you're divining. Uh, especially doing the minimum and the maximum would be great. Now, um, POB doesn't increase the quality. So let's say that the base quality is 30, right? But it also won't, it won't count the 18 quality from this. So we have to like manually put it to 48 to see exactly how strong it is. So the max for that would be 720 PDPS. Now, obviously this is a lot better than a disfavor. So uh, um, yeah, getting the quality there is great. And this is an example of how strong like having a hybrid role can be. And then also, um, oh yeah, you're right. I didn't do a max of the quality. Oh, it won't let me. But like the quality here doesn't matter what it says there. It is 16 to 18. And and this role will never be part of the actual DPS. You have to um you have to put it here in quality. And do remember that the quality of a weapon will like for but this is mostly important for wall axes or two handers to chest. Remember that the quality directly influences how much easier it is to link or fuse an item. If you're wondering if this is true or not, it literally says on the orb itself. The item's quality increases the chance of obtaining more sockets. The item's quality increases the chance of obtaining more links. That's why you will see that most of the streamers or whatever people you're watching will be um, crafting quality and also trying to get it close to 30 quality. Um, yeah. Also, I'm, I'm taking a quick toilet break and then we're going to continue to do a little bit more on axes before moving on to the next topic. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this is some of my useful tips. I literally have used 7,000 fusings to link a 48 quality bow, though. Mm-hmm. That happens. I've done the same. Bear back.
I joined the class even if I didn't graduate my high school. Yeah, all Papegis are welcome here. Me included. Um, Bangnaboo, thank you for the 17 months. Kuma Place PC, thank you for the 4 months. And Bangnaboo, thank you for the 17 months. Do more, thank you for the Twitch Prime Cyber Tier. Thank you for the 15 months. Ragey corn, honey corn, and this. Oh. What is a crusader item? Um, so there's different influence types in Path of Exile. There's hunter, shaper, elder, crusader, redeemer, uh, and warlord. So crusader is just uh, a base type item that will have like different different roles. Um, right. Let's see. Yeah, actually, like um, I think I've covered most things but like let's do a little like quick Q&A specifically about axes now at the end how good is plus one socketed gems on a wall axe it really doesn't matter I don't like it is like very negligible damage it like it's it's in the way of other things you don't care about it at all uh and same with like uh on a disfavor as well like that is like you're adding like it, it's adding like 10 to 20 dps How good is accuracy on an axe? Great question. Depends a little bit about um, uh, what, what kind of build you have. A lot of builds run precision. So um, so then like if, if you can be accuracy cap without it, you know, then it doesn't matter. Um, in a lot of builds, you do struggle with accuracy and then it is quite valuable. Most of the time though, like, yeah. I, I generally try not to use it. Quite often your resolute technique as well and then you don't need accuracy. Do we care about the speed of the axe or the PDPS is all we should care about? Yeah, the speed is important. And, and remember while you're leveling that base types are important too. So don't use like a level 16 base type. And you can use the wiki to look up the base types and stuff. You said for 200, higher PDPS is always better. Is it the same for dual wield? Uh, no, I would like, like I said when explaining as well, like the, the 1.5 attack speed bases you generally always go for. This might be changing slightly in Harvest, but I don't think it'll change that much for two dual wielding. Mostly for two handers. Best way to craft an Elder 83 axe for a bleed build. Um, I think that's in the build guide steel made. I think it's corroded and jacket. I haven't actually done bleed. I think it's jagged and corroded. What's the reason to go for axes instead of swords in melee builds? Um, sure. Let's talk about that. Swords are awesome. There's a lot of good sword nodes. I feel like swords are generally better for crit. Axes are easier for the start of the game. Resolute technique or when you're just neither, you're not actually focusing on crit. Um, I feel like swords like really, really encourage you to go crit and getting nodes like this. Um, disemboweling, uh, dismembering. I, I really, really feel a bit pushed into crate with swords. Um, whereas axes, um, like you get so many nodes. Like if I'm dual wielding a 200, I can take either dervish or destroyer, then harvester of foes. Whereas I feel like the sword nodes, especially if I'm, I'm even if I'm dualist or marauder, they're a little bit more out of the way. Uh, the axe nodes over here are so great. Slaughter giving you free onslaughts. So you don't need any on, uh, you don't need it on a searching or a murderous eye, and you don't need a flask. You don't need the onslaught gem. Um, maces are currently not in a great spot. I'm I'm not a not a big. I don't think anyone's a big fan of maces. They're mostly they're they're kind of in a meme spot. I don't think they have like any. The nodes aren't particularly strong, and their base types aren't strong. Claws are really strong. Claws are great, but that's like kind of a different archetype. True, they are getting buffed. So hopefully in Harvest, Maces will be better. I think that's what they want to do as well. Maces are great if you like the Permastun. Yeah. Um, worst half main here. Useful recipes for melee leveling. That's mostly the Rustic Sash recipe and then using your crafting bench a lot. 
can't think of anything else. I mean, I wouldn't use the grounded recipes. Can you get max block with a two-handed weapon? It'd be really hard. You would need, like, a roomies. Not Kilo Ava, because it's on the skill tree now, but, like, the double block thing. They changed that slightly. Yep, today's crafting school day. We're, like, we're just wrapping up on axes here. And then we are moving on to, um, jewelry crafting and tips after this. And then after that, we're doing survival tips and hardcore, and then mapping and map tips at the end. War staves, also in a bad spot. Can't remember. Did they say they're changing staffs? Well, DPS, are you aiming for your first endgame weapon of the new league? Uh, like, around 450. 430 to 450 PDPS. How do you get tanky with two-handers without a shield? Um, generally you end up getting around 220 life on your tree, getting Enduring Charges, we, uh, either being Juggernaut is obviously very tanky, uh, Enduring Cry, or Enduring Charge on Melee Sun and Relief Sun, that helps a lot, and then picking up some Enduring Charges, but you do end up getting quite a lot of life. On 200s, quite often, a lot of people will wear a Combs Heart as well, that's like a big benefit that 200s have. Is it good to have PDPS and LEDPS or just one of them? So generally, um, it's been a long time since Melee has used EDPS at all. Um, and a part of the problem with EDPS, if you need EDPS, there already is a solution. I'll show you. Let's see. Actually, I might have one. The problem is nothing you ever craft is going to come close. Where's the arrows? I must have one. There's no way I don't. Um, so this has like... What, what's the perfect roll arrows? Six, seven hundred EDPS? So it's like nearly impossible to like create a better one. And it's so cheap. It's so common. It just drops everywhere. Um, so it's, it's incredibly hard. Um, and, and even that isn't particularly great. It just doesn't scale. 840 is perfect roll. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and Void Forge. So... It's just something with like the scaling and it, it's not been that great lately. Um, so PDPS is generally what you go for. Is 600 DPS on a Valax good enough for the end bosses? Yeah, 100%. That's enough for Awakener and everything. Um, in the next patch, 600 DPS on a Valax. While that now is very high, I think like the current, the, ne the next end game for Valaxes and stuff probably going to be seven or 800. I mean, you can still play everything with melee other damage. Or is this great for flicker build? Yeah, it's okay. What happens when you have the best axe in the game? Does it become obsolete after a while or you'll have it forever and no need to craft anymore? I mean, yeah, it'll, it'll never... If you have something that like, would be considered close to the best, it's never going to be obsolete. Ever. Like, anything that is even, like, the tier 2 of every roll right now is probably never going to be obsolete. Like, it might get um, beaten by other things, but it'll still be fine for anything the game will ever have. What do you aim for when crafting items in Path of Build for theory crafting builds? Dog shit items. Um, I think the main important things for me when I theory craft is that there's so many new players that are following the builds and... I need to make sure that the build works with pretty shit items. Because if it doesn't work with shit items, then for so many players, they're going to struggle. And if it works with shit items, like if it's already good with that, then it's probably going to be fucking great with actually good items. Um, so most of the time, you'll see uh, nearly every build I have um, will be um, um, life and resist. So I'm not, I don't want to answer questions that I've just covered in the guide. So I'll, I'll skip those. We go, uh, and, and like this is just about axe stuff. As well. And like uh, a lot of people are asking about like Torment Rend. Which is it used to be the best axe in the game. And that wasn't something I. That was actually something we crafted more on accident. Because somebody said like craft the siege axe. And I wasn't even going to use um, siege axes in that league. Um, and I wouldn't like 
I would never like try to roll something like that because it's it's an insane amount. But just as an example of like, this is like some of the best stuff. This has been beaten now, uh, but this used to be the best axe in the game for a long time. The Undisputed. Uh, melee build can do more damage than spell builds with gear. Yeah, Tuna. Right, I don't really see any more um, axe questions. So I'm going to end the uh, axe crafting uh, thing here. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I don't think I missed too much stuff of like the core stuff. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I uh, hope you enjoy. If you like the content and stuff, I do subscribe or whatever. And uh, yeah, have fun in Harvest. Try to die less than I do. <laughs>